hey, Bob, you know, welcome to the club that you never, ever wanted to be a part of. My partner and I were shopping and the phone rang and it was the doctor. It's not good news, you have breast cancer. I noticed a depression in my chest where the skin seemed to be pulling back in. Here I was with a diagnosis of breast cancer that only women get. It, it kind of it made me feel kind of strange. I felt that I needed to talk to somebody who knew what I was going through. Initially, I was looking for any kind of support. I hadn't found any. When it comes to breast cancer, nobody mentions men because there's not enough of us. I found Bill Decker. He had breast cancer on the same side of his body. He had the same treatment plan, the same uh, treatment drugs. He said to us, as you go through this, talk to me about you know, how you're feeling and I'll share with you some of the things that I've been through and so that, you know, you, you don't feel so alone. We just kind of, you know, grew to know each other very quickly. We, we talked about his family life, having six children. And I told him that I was gay and that I had, you know, a partner. And we became fast friends. And fast friends, absolutely. You're like my brother in this. We're like breast cancer brothers. He was truly kind of guiding me along my journey. And we joke and call them manograms. <laughs> we were so close and so similar. Now he's taking that fork in the road. Um, I had a pain. We did some more tests. That's when we got the news that it had spread. Bill um, has metastatic disease now. Stage four. Uh, cancer is terminal. Here I am, I'm, I'm all clear, and he's not. He really has been kind of my role model, and I almost have survivor's guilt. And now we're taking different paths. Everything that they base my treatment on is what they know about women. Every time something happens, there needs to be a test, and there needs to be blood drawn, and there needs to be a scan done. And I don't know why I'm okay, and I don't know why he's not okay, and that pisses me off. I'm learning now that every time I have a pain, cancer seems to show up. You know, my, my role, you know, leading up to this was one of support, and, you know, everyone could turn to me. Now it's, it's you know, kind of, I've taken a step back. We've had some challenges in, in treatment. Unfortunately, because I'm a guy, there's not a lot of clinical trials out there. We had a game plan. Well, that game plan didn't work. I would gladly work with anyone who wanted to start a case study. I would provide knowledge. I would provide uh, blood. <laughs> Give almost anything to help do that. The reality is, is that cancer will, cancer will take him. And, um, you know, that's hard. And that's hard for kids to hear. And that's hard to fight against because it's an uphill battle now. And I want to be angry, but I can't be angry anymore. It's too much energy to waste. It really, it really puts you to the test. You know, it really takes you and, you know, makes you work hard for everything, for life, for relationships. It doesn't really faze me at all. I love what's inside. I'm always well. For love. It, it just really makes you work for it. <laughs> My love. <laughs> And if you can accept 
that it's going to be a challenge and a struggle and you can roll with it, you, you can do this. This is, you know, what life dealt to me and, you know, I'm, I'm going to run with it. You're a fighter. And I'm a fighter. I'm still standing. I'm still breathing. I'll break a record. I'll, I'll live for as long as I possibly can. We'll get through it and he'll never be alone. Believe in God. There are miracles out there. Absolutely. Um, they say that, you know, male breast cancer is 1% of all breast cancers. But for those of us who are survivors, that 1% actually became 100%. You know what, it's important. We need to dig deeper.